Hey guys, this is Kathy here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great, great day wherever you are. And today we are doing my reading and entertainment wrap up. So let's see what I've been reading and watching this week. I'm listening to one audible book and I'm reading a physical book. The audible book I'm reading, I am thoroughly enjoying. It's called Bellevue. Bellevue, Three Centuries of Medicine and Mayhem at America's Most Storied Hospital by David Owinski. It is so good. It's so interesting. And it's totally nonfiction. It talks about Bellevue, how it was established, all the situations that were occurring at the time, and its progression into history. It talks about medical practices of the late 1700s. I know they didn't know any better, but my gosh, it was barbaric crazy. It talks about diseases in the area, their theories of what caused the diseases, which were so off the mark, and how they tried to treat them. They would do everything from bloodletting. I'm not talking about a little blood. I'm talking about a lot of blood. My assumption is that many died because many died of anemia. They had no blood. They would just keep letting the blood in. They would use leeches. They would use some type of jars and they would cut and it's just crazy. Just kind of so interesting based on what we know now to hear how they were searching for these answers and they couldn't find them. Surgery back then, barbaric, horrible, no anesthetic. Really there were very little training for these doctors either. They just went in there and they, they did what they wanted to do. They cut. I think one time I was listening to it while I was walking and I think I said out loud on the trail, horrifying, it was just so bad. They talked about in this book, George Washington's later days. He wasn't much older than me when he died. He had some type of a throat problem. So he went to a doctor, had a doctor come to him and the first thing they did was bloodletting. I think they said 10 to 12 ounces, which is a lot. So they did some bloodletting. It didn't do anything, obviously. So he went on to see another doctor who did more bloodletting, and they said they put leeches in his throat. They didn't say on his throat, they said in his throat, and I can't even comprehend that. They had a very strong medication that would make you just have horrible diarrhea and horrible vomiting, and the poor man, they did that to him as well. They were just, it was torture. So finally at the end he said, Finally, at the end, he said, just let me go in peace, basically, and he died soon after. So he probably would have lived if he hadn't gone to the doctor. I don't know. But it, it's fascinating. If, you're, if you enjoy reading about the history and the history of medicine and also other things that were occurring, immigration and all types of things happening in New York at that time, you would like this book. And the narrator does a good job. I, I've enjoyed listening to it thoroughly so far. I'm probably about halfway done. My physical book that I'm reading is called Fable, and I think this little girl's gorgeous. Red, really dark auburn hair, freckles, which I love, blue eyes, she's just gorgeous. And basically this is about a, a girl who's 17 at the time. She was raised with her mother and father who were kind of like pirates. They were on a boat, a ship, I guess I should say. And a big storm came up, the boat crashed, the mom died, and the dad had this little girl Fable. And he abandoned her. He took her to an island which was that lacked food. Uh, there were thieves. It was a very, very dangerous place, and he left her there. And so now she's on a quest to find him. I'm not exactly sure why, but she's on a quest to find him. It's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. I probably end up giving it probably around 3, 3.5 stars, but I'm not sure yet because I'm only about that far, which is, I'm on page 104. So I will let you know my reading wrap-up when I give this book. So what am I watching on TV? I started watching Jimmy Fallon, The Tonight Show. I think Jimmy Fallon is so funny. And you not only get to enjoy his humor when you watch the show, but you learn what's out there as far as entertainment, TV shows, movies, music. So I've learned a lot on his show about what's out there. And based on listening to him, I found a show called The Old Man. And it's on Hulu. And it's got John Lethgrove. John Lethgo, I think is how you pronounce his name, and it's got Jeff Bridges in it. It's pretty intense. It's on Hulu, like I said, and you've got these two men, I'm going to say their first names, Jeff and John, who are older now, older men, and their past is coming back to haunt them. They were both in some type of, either the FBI or the CIA or some type of military thing. 
they're not together now. Jeff Bridges had gone off in seclusion, hiding from whatever he had done in his past. And this guy knows about him, but they're not in contact until one day someone discovers where he is. And then it all begins from there. It's kind of intense. He does have, as you can see in the picture, this is not a picture from the show, but he does have um, a rock. Well, he has two Rottweilers. They're good to have around if you're in danger. That's all I have to say. So I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it or not, but I, I enjoyed the first episode and I've now gotten into the second one just a little bit. And so I'm going to continue on with it for a while and see what happens. I love Master Chef. Master Chef, you have these chefs vying to be the best chefs ever. They're being judged. Somebody's always eliminated at each show, and they're being judged by Gordon Ramsay, this guy named Joe. I call him Chef Joe. And then Ron Sanchez, I think his name is. Gordon Ramsay can be pretty harsh, but he's not as harsh as he used to be, or he's not as harsh as he is on Hell's Kitchen. Chef Joe is just, he's arrogant, he's judgmental. I'm not, he's not my favorite. Aron Sanchez is a sweetie. I mean, he's, he'll tell you what's right and what's wrong, which is what you want, but he's not out to crush you, like I feel like Chef Joe is. So that's a good show. I enjoy that. The other show I'm watching is America's Got Talent. I ask myself sometimes why I watch it, but then I see a video like I saw the other week, and I know why I watch it. It's a young man he is a saxophone player and he gets up there and he, he said he was bullied. He talks about being bullied and about how his situation is not the best. He can't practice and you can tell he's nervous. Um, he starts playing, brings down the house. He's so good. You have to watch the video. That's all I have to say. It will make you cry. And Terry, the guy, one of the hosts, Terry, I love Terry. And Terry takes a real liking to this young man. It's really sweet. They interviewed one actor who's on a show called Moon Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, on Disney+. And I thought I'd watch that. I thought I might enjoy it. The first episode, I like the actors just fine. But the poor guy, he seems so confused. He's running all over the place. He doesn't know what's happening. I surely didn't know what was happening. So, but I was somewhat intrigued nonetheless. So I went on to watch the second episode, and I thought, I, I can't do it to myself. I just couldn't get into it. It's from Marvel, so I think he might be some type of superhero. I don't know, but I kind of gave up on that one. For me, you might love it. The movies I want to watch coming up, I want to watch A Man Called Uva. If you, if you haven't read the book, please read the book. The book is excellent. Please, when you first start the book, don't discard it when you think, Oh, this man's just a grumpy old man. I can't stand him because that's exactly how I felt. But I end up loving him and the characters in the book. But it's somewhat heartwarming in an odd kind of way. It's, it's a good, good book. You'll fall in love with Uva. But there's a movie, A Man Called Uva. It's been out for some time now. I'm afraid to watch it because in my mind I have all these images of what the characters look like in the book. And I, I hope it doesn't destroy my images. Usually the book is better than the movie, not always, but mostly. So I do want to see that. It's on my list. The other one that's on my list is The Lost City. It's got Sandra Bullock in it. And the actor that was interviewed on Jimmy Kimmel was Daniel Radcliffe, who I think was Harry Potter. I'm not sure. I don't know these actors. I think so. But my daughter had seen it and said it's really funny. And so I've got that on my list to watch too. I haven't been out to see a current movie at the theater in a very long time. Not because of COVID or anything. I just haven't done it. So recently, Maggie, my five-year-old granddaughter, wanted to go see a movie, and she was spending a few days with me, and I said, okay. I said, what do you want to see? And she said, Jurassic World. And I thought, oh, no. I'd scare her to death. I don't know. She's seen the other ones, though, at home. But I asked her mom, and she said, yeah, go ahead and take her. See if she can handle it. So we went, Maggie and I. She had her father's military-grade headphones, in case it was too loud. So we get in there, and I thought the beginning was slow. Only because you're getting reacquainted with all the characters from the past movies. A lot of the older characters are in it. So it was kind of slow for me in the beginning. I thought, God, she's going to be so bored. But she managed to get through that. Then they had a scene where these two little kids are running, screaming, terrified from these prehistoric-sized locusts. They were swarms of them heading toward these poor children. And I thought, okay, this is going to get Maggie. We're going to have to leave. Hmm? Didn't seem to phase her. I thought, oh, we might make it through the whole movie. Go a little bit further, and all of a sudden, there's some physical fighting going on between the good guys and the bad guys, 
and there's dinosaurs too. Dinosaurs are on the attack. So all this is happening at one time. It was almost a climactic, although we hadn't gotten maybe halfway into the movie. And Maggie said, Nana, can we go? I said, sure, baby. And so I started packing up my stuff and I saw she settled back in. I thought, well, maybe she's changed her mind. So I settled back into, Nana, can we go now? <laughs> I said, yes, yes. So we got up and went. And she talked all afternoon about how proud she was that she made it halfway through Jurassic World. And of course, I reinforced that, that she did a good job. So that is it for my reading and entertainment wrap up. I'd love to know what you're watching. Have you seen Jurassic World Dominion? What do you think? Because I only saw half of it. I may have to go back and see the rest. A movie coming out, I don't think it's out yet, maybe next week, is Elvis. I do want to go see that. Stephanie, Erica, and Josh went to see Top Gun. They loved it. Everybody I've talked to has loved that one. I'm not really a Tom Cruise fan, but I can get past him and watch the movie. So, All right, guys, that is it for my entertainment wrap-up. I'd love to know what you're watching and reading. Put it in the description box for me, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.